Hello and welcome to Bite-Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organizations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more Bite Size Revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is on microscopic polyangitis under the section of rheumatology. What is microscopic polyangitis? So it's a type of anchor associated vasculitis and very frequently it presents with pulmonary and renal hemorrhage. As for its epidemiology, it's twice as common in males than in females. It's more common in Caucasians and also the mean age of presentation is usually around 50. As for its etiology, it is a type of anti-neutrophil psychoplasmic antibody or anchor driven vasculitis. However, importantly, it lacks granulomatous inflammation. As for its signs and symptoms, as we discussed earlier, it very frequently has pulmonary and renal involvement, normally in the form of either pulmonary hemorrhage or infiltrates, and it can also be accompanied by cutaneous nodules. In terms of investigations, it's really important to have a systematic order when you are presenting and discussing your investigations, especially for the case of PACES. So you would want to do a thorough history and examination and targeting your examination findings and system after taking that thorough history. You would want to be taking basic bedside observations and that's to check for heart rate, blood pressure, temperature and essentially calculating a news score for your patient to make sure that they're hemodynamically stable. You would want to do a urine dipstick because it's really easy to do and it will crucially tells you whether the patient has got any potential renal involvement or not after finding out about hematuria or proteinuria. Then you would want to some blood test and that will include full blood count, checking for anemia, checking for infection and also renal function and liver function testing as well as your inflammatory markers such as ESR and CRP which frequently are going to be elevated in the case of vasculitis. You would then want to be asking for an autoimmune panel and that will certainly include ANCA, ANA and a connective tissue disease screen. And for the cases of microscopic polyangitis, very frequently it's going to be the P anchor or MPO being positive in about 70% of cases. This is something that is an absolute multiple choice MRCP part one or part two question. Uh, you would want to do a chest x-ray, especially if there is a high suspicion of pulmonary hemorrhage. And you would also in practice would realistically want to do a CT thorax, abdomen, pelvis, or at least high resolution CT scan. And that's to make sure that you A, are not missing any other potential diagnosis such as malignancies, and B, really have a detailed examination of the lung parenchyma. And then the diagnosis is going to be made with a tissue biopsy and that's very frequently is going to be renal biopsy. The treatment of it is similar to other types of vasculitis, and that is the importance of having a multidisciplinary team approach or an MDT and involving the appropriate specialties depending on the case for your patient. Then the treatment in terms of medical management is going to be divided broadly into two groups. One is for induction and the other one is for maintenance. Induction is going to be through the use of steroids plus either cyclophosphamide or rituximab. And in terms of the maintenance, you would be looking at options such as azathioprine or methotrexate. Let's do some questions now. So question one is which of the following antibodies is most closely associated with microscopic polyangitis? One is ANA, two is C anchor, three is P anchor, four is DSDNA, and five is CCP. And if you recall correctly, you will remember that the correct option is going to be P anchor, which is positive in about 70% of cases with microscopic polyangitis. Question two is which of the following drugs may not be used in the treatment of MPA? One, infliximab, two, rituximab, three, cyclophosphamide, four, methylprednisolone, five, mucophenolate morphotil. 
And if you remember from our discussion earlier about the strategies for induction and remission of MPA, you will remember that infliximab doesn't have any role in it, whereas the others are either used for induction or maintenance treatment. Thanks for listening to this episode of Biostars MRCP. If you like what you've heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in the future. See you in the next episode.